my messiest of studios. This is Jolice DeAngelis and I'm happy to welcome you to the Crafts You Print Crafts Show. And today we'll be having, we'll be learning how to do stitching on cards. Have you ever tried that? It's a very relaxing way to make a beautiful card that will just amaze any recipient you have. So you will really love that. That along with Crafty Bob's news and notes and all of everything going on in the Cupland community, you'll love that. So I hope all you cupcakes out there really enjoy this episode. Hello, welcome to Crafts Your Print Community News, Jolice DeAngelis reporting. Today we have lots of visuals for our news, so let's get rolling. First of all, we have some exciting news for Sylvia Griffin. Check this out. This is her daughter and her family. And her daughter is now expecting twins in October. Wow, what a fun family they have and even finer when those twins get here. Congratulations, Sylvia, and be sure to do all your work now so you can help that new mama and baby out. Now, exclusive designer Rob Jackson has a great picture of his son. Look at this. And his son is a real fisherman, and he proudly shows off his biggest carp catch to date. He's just loving this UK sunshine, and him and his friends are out fishing most days, so have fun, Ben. Now, Robin Coburn saw this adorable little fella. Look at him. How cute is he? So I'm in the middle of suburbia, which you don't normally expect to see koalas there. And so then after some, you know, kind of nervous moments, hoping he'd get to stay safety, she, he, she saw him off. And then she was inspired by his whimsical looks and his brave actions. She designed this triptych easel card. It's cup three, four, four, zero, six, two, underscore one, two, three. And this sample of, of her triptych card here was made by Sandra Griggs. How fun is that? Don't we all wish we could have cute little buggers in our backyards? Well, some of us do. We just call them our husbands. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I just had to throw that in there. Okay. Look at these adorable little hoglets. Those little hedgehogs are so cute. This is exclusive. Ex exclusive? Oh, that's a cross between explosive and exclusive. So, exclusive designer Patricia Platt. She went MIA, but... She only is out of the cup action, not completely missing. And because these little hoglets were dropped at her door, there's two boys and two girls. So Patricia does good for all the hedge hoglets in the world. So we're so glad you're taking care of these little ones. And we'll forgive you and miss a few designs here and there. Take care of your little babies, Patricia. Let's see. Now we have some, oh, recent image of the week. This is so beautiful. This was the, re was the sheet. I... Uh, Angela Ludwig, it's cup 330841 underscore 1466. It is so beautiful, isn't that? Don't you just love that? And here we have a completed card. It's so lovely. This card was done by Denise Murray. Denise Murray. Denise Murray. I'm really having a problem with pronunciation and speaking tonight. Just feel free to fast forward over all my mistakes. I wouldn't mind. Okay, so Denise Murray made this beautiful job, this beautiful card with Angela's design. Fantastic. And let's see, here we have another beautiful, beautiful design. Isn't this just lovely? Mareka Kulk, Mareka, Mareka Kulk. I hope I said that in your name right there. This is cup 324942 underscore 936. Those beautiful fuchsias. Oh, what a great, great card. Thank you for making that. Now here's another card. Here's a card that's out there by uh, Susan Allison. Now, Susan Allison, not only is she a cup designer, but she's also an author, got some awesome books on Kindle, and she even has one in paperback now. Great stuff, by the way. She does drawings of the most whimsical little animals. Here's one of her whippets. Now I have combined two sheets. This is one sheet, and then this is the background or the insert from another sheet that she made to coordinate with it. This is called, She Was a Bit Shy. How adorable is that? Anyway, it's cup 336234 underscore 1030 by Susan Allison. And the resize, the background over here on this size, it, side, excuse me, is cup 336236 underscore 1030. 
And believe it or not, when I printed this off today, this still had the gold star on it. Somebody missed their golden shining moments. Are you checking to see if there's a gold star there and reserving it for you as soon as you check out so that you have the opportunity to make the card for this and that way you can make money every time this design sells. So be sure and check out those gold stars and if you have any questions on how it works, just go ahead and go to the form, ask one of the experts or the designers, you'll get all the help you need. Now, have you ever gone in to check the sale items that are available? It's a really great place to check out. So we have a few items that were on sale recently. Now, how beautiful is this? This is cup 345933 underscore 376 by Michelle Johnson. I mean, my goodness, that's on sale. How great is that? You have to go check out all those sale items. They're just absolutely stupendously marvelous. And now, I don't mean to really be touting Susan Allison's horn, but I have to show you this one that she had on sale this week. It is so adorable. And this is the title of it. Isn't that adorable? But check out this little, this is her tribute to the king, she says. Oh, how cute is that? It's cut 242147 underscore 1030 by Susan Allison. And this cup that you see here was made by Lorraine Reed. And that cup number is an A4 design, so you can make all kinds of things if you purchase that design. So just go ahead and go out there and have fun. Well, that's all we have for community news. So enjoy your day, enjoy your week, and have a great whatever you're having over there. <laughs> or over here, I guess. <laughs> Jolie's team Dan still sort of reporting even after this messed up report. <laughs> but when you start pricking, notice I have like a little like a little cutting board under here and then I have just some soft foam now a mouse pad works just as well or of course a pricking pad which is made for pricking so here I have my pattern stitched out I have my um, my cardstock that I'm actually going to use taped temporarily to the back and I'll just go through and I'll prick now remember, when you have um, a straight line of dots, if you prefer, you can just bring your ruler on here and you can just prick next to, uh, next to that where every dot is and you'll have a perfectly aligned set of dots there. So that's just a helpful hint for, for future reference. So now the basic triangle, remember you're working in a clockwise um, order. So what you're going to do, you're going to take from the first one here up to here's the second line. You're going to start with that, that top one there. Remember, we don't have the point of the triangle, but one down from the point of the triangle. We're going to come down there and we're going to come up in the very next hole. We're just going to go, we're just going to go back like that and we're going to come up in that next hole and then we're going to put it down on the next hole from where we brought it up on the other side. So we're just going to keep doing that. We're going to keep keep moving one hole up, one hole back every time we stitch. And when we're done, we'll have a beautiful, beautiful finished triangle. And there's the finished triangle. Now this triangle motif, if you want to call it that, is very, very common in stitching patterns. Many of the stitching patterns on Crafts Your Print have the triangle um, stitch. So I just wanted to let you know how to do that one. I want to show you how to thread your needle. It's very easy to do. Or I mean, you know how to thread a needle. <laughs> I mean to tie your knot so that it won't be slipping and you won't have to worry about it slipping out of your needle. Just take the end of your thread and wrap it around your finger there and then take your needle where it's threaded through and put it right underneath there, pull it and then you just pull that tight. I like to pull my needle up towards the end a little bit. Bring it there and there's your needle. There, I mean there's your knot ready to go. If you've done stitching designs before, you have, or have even looked at some online, you've no doubt seen a numbered instruction. Like for instance, um, 
one five one seven one thirteen well that's what I'm going to be showing you now how to do how to do a one thirteen stitch so it, it sounds complicated but it's really not it's very easy to do so what you do is you just start your just remember that the hole that you start at remember you're going to work in a clockwise direction this is hole number one now you count one and then you count over to 13 and you put it you put your needle through on count 13 so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so we're going to do 13 and then we're going to come up at 14 and down at what would be two. Oops, excuse me. Then we're going to come up at three and down at 15. And so you just keep doing that. So there we are. Designs done stitching. Now you might think that you're done, but you're not. First what you need to do is you need to take this and you need to flip it over. Now, as you can tell, the threads are very, very neat on the bag. Don't don't mind my scotch tape; that doesn't count. <laughs> but what is always a good idea to do when you're done with the stitching is to try to make these holes close up a little bit more. Now, I like to use one of my scoring tools because I get just a little bit better of a of a look on it that way. It really closes them up nicely. Now you might think that it doesn't make much difference, but it really does. Um, on this particular design, maybe it won't make so much difference because A, I'm using really big threads. My holes are big anyway. And B, most of, most of the thread work is kind of covering up the holes. But for the professional stitcher, <laughs> which I don't know, if I'm a professional stitcher or not. I'm just making that up. But for anyone who knows what they're doing, let's say, in stitching, they will be able to tell a difference. Um, and, you know, it's just that having that nice um, peace of mind that, you know, you did everything you could to make this card look professional and beautiful, and there you go. So that's just a final step you might want to take on each design because it really does help the, the card pop just a little bit, just look a little bit more finished. And the completed project. Isn't that nice? Now this lovely stitching design by Diana Hutchinson has the card front with the stitching pattern right on the sheet so you don't have to worry about coordinating your card stocks or anything. As you can see I added an outline to the diamond section of the, of the stitching pattern otherwise it's just beautiful the way it is. And check out this one by Diana Hutchinson. It's called Valentine Kisses. Don't you just love that? How simple was that? To slap it on a card with a little bit of ribbon? I love it! And this, as yet unfinished stitching pattern, if you look in the upper left, you can kind of see a few swirls. That's the stitching pattern. I just haven't finished the card yet. I'm going to get to use one of my beautiful rubber stamps with this one, a stamp that says, if I had a star for every time you make me smile, I'd have the night sky in my hand. Thank you, Diana, for the perfect pattern. And here's a lovely owl pattern by Sarah Edwards. I did it in silver with um, some silver glitter and lots of rubber stamps. It, it's just dream a little dream. It just seems so elegant and pretty. Thank you, Sarah, for such a lovely yet simple olive or owl pattern. <laughs> Now check out this beautiful ornate letter D that Sarah Edwards has a pattern for. Now when you're sewing, when you're doing stitching patterns, feel free to kind of um, invent your own. She, Sarah had a simple back stitch, but I chose to kind of put some one to five stitches, some one to three stitches, just to kind of dress it up. So do your own thing. Now this fantastic beauty, this is actually a bookmark pattern that Diana Hutchinson made. And it's beautiful, as you can see on the left, I just chose to put it on my card, along with some of my wonderful papers I have from, you know, every crafter selection, and a rubber stamp of this beautiful lady. Oof, I had fun. Thank you, Diana. Perfect, perfect pattern for this. And of course, more of my favorite autumn colors. This gorgeous pattern um, 
by Sarah Edwards. It's actually a frame, but I kind of resized it and redid it a little bit so that I could make it into a bookmark and put it in my card. I just love that fan stitch, Sarah. It's so beautiful. Ooh.